Uh, for the third time tonight, uh, Parish President of uh, Jefferson, Cynthia Lee Shang, joining us now by phone. I, I believe you've been out on the streets uh, assessing things. Um, what's your latest update for us? And thanks again, for by the way, for joining us at 1.30 here in the morning as well, too. Uh, but why don't you give us an update on, on what you're seeing? Yeah, I actually rode out the storm on the West Bank and was trying to get to the East Bank because I know that's where we had many issues with flooding and over top canals. But um, actually, believe it or not, the water was too high. I didn't want to take my car out here. We were going to be pushing water into people's homes. So um, got word that the water was starting to recede a little bit. It's obviously probably 11, 12, 3, three and a half hours since the rain stopped. So we made our way over here. And look, I'm at West Esplanade. It's still very high, um, closer to the Lake Avenue area that's always a trouble spot it's too high i didn't want to drop through there because it was up to somebody's doorstep so we i did not want to go down there but it's very high still but having said that um i had a picture of uh transcontinental and west Esplanade that looked like inundated with water it looked like a lake and i'm sitting here now and the water's clearly gone down a lot i'm on the road the canal's high but you can see the side of the canal so um, we were getting reports throughout that the water was receding i wanted to see for it myself and um, I'll be driving through Kenner and, and Harahan River Ridge and all that Elmwood area as well. So it's good. Look, the pumps are working through the night, um, and they will continue. We can, we can operate pumps in the dark, but we still had that I and I problem with our sewer system, and we need the daylight to get our vacuum trucks out there, our portable generators out there, our temporary pumps out there um, to try to get water out of our sewer system. So we are still requesting people conserve on their water usage until we can catch up on our sewer system. So the, so the sewer system piece of this, the solving that is, is going to take a little time. That's not something when people wake up, they're going to be able to, you know, start changing things. No, and the, the good thing is, you know, we, we kind of knew we were going to have a problem early in the evening. Um, probably in the afternoon, we were hearing that people couldn't flush their toilets. And we were like, uh oh, this, you know, we, we understand what that means. And it's just the, the sewer system taking on too much storm water through cracks in the pipes under the ground. Um, and it, it just starts taking in the water. Um, no, it's going to take us a little time for that. We, we, we um, have an emergency contract with vacuum trucks. We do have some of our own, but we, we probably need a little bit more um, with an emergency contract. And we need the time. We have over 500 lift stations throughout the parish. We have some larger regional lift stations. So for us to get out there and, and see is the problem a lack of electricity or is the pop problem that the pump just blew out, um, but we will get on it as soon as we can in the morning. But we are asking people to conserve water until we can catch up with that. And as I said, we need daylight to start that work tomorrow. And we will get out there as soon as we can, as soon as day breaks. Um, our, our teams are ready to get out there and, and start that work. And Cynthia, even though the water is receding in some spots and you said it's still very high in others like near West Esplanade, how concerning is it to you that there's still this much amount of water on the roads, in people's yards? I mean, is that a concern to you? Look, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. You know, I saw pictures of this, this area right where I am at now, right transcontinental and West Esplanade, and it was a deadly situation if you were in a car. And I was so grateful that people were at home. It was dark. The roads were empty um, because it, it really could be a really deadly situation. Um, and that was just a few hours ago. And now, you know, I'm on the road. I can see the canal bank. You can see that, you know, there's a difference between the canal and the road. It's a very different look right now. So I'm very happy about that. In, in a three-hour time span, we were able to get, you know, that much water pumped out. Um, and throughout the East Bank, it's, it's going to be like that, and we're going to be pumping through the night. So it, it happens, you know, when you watch it, it looks real slow, but give it a couple hours, and you'll notice it going down, and hopefully by tomorrow even more will go down. My hope is that tomorrow, and I haven't finished driving around the East Bank, we have, you know, what looks like an overtop canal. is We don't have that situation anywhere, and the road is very clear from the canal. That's, that's my hope for tomorrow morning, and, and I think we'll be able to get there maybe without some you know, just a couple spots, and, and but um, mm -hmm. but just before, before we let you go, I just want to so the West Bank appears to be OK. It's the East Bank, more Metairie and Kenner uh, that yes. you've seen and or heard of the, the biggest flooding issues. Yeah, the West Bank, I've heard very little about in terms of structural, in terms of flooding. No, the West Bank seems to have fared very, very well. And look, I, I'll say this, just driving around, um, 
to have the structures look good. I mean, there's no gutter cans hanging. There's no, you know, no pieces of roof missing. It, it, it you know, it's, it's, the buildings were intact, so I don't think the wind was an issue. This was a rain event that overwhelmed us, overwhelmed our pumping capacity, uh, with, with the exception of a couple pumps that were just, we lost power to. Um, most of the pumps were working overwhelmingly. Most of the pumps were working. We just couldn't keep up with the rainwater. We had an average of seven to nine inches uh, that fell on the east bank today, compared to only five inches on the west bank. And some areas of the east bank took almost 11 inches of water. Hmm. So you just look at those numbers, you know, we're not going to be able to keep up. And um, I know there's structural flooding on the east bank. It's hard for me to tell at night. It's, it's you know, everybody's sleeping. It's, it's hard for me to get those numbers. So uh, we'll have more data um, tomorrow about, about that kind of structural flooding and what that looks like. Parish President Cynthia Lee Shang, thanks again, again, the third time tonight you've joined us to get information to residents in Jefferson Parish. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You bet. And she, okay. she brought up a, the, the statistic there was interesting when she talked about the West Bank. The rain amount of rainfall, versus yeah. Versus the East Bank certainly helps explain why um, they likely have more issues on the East Bank than in the West Bank. Some places on the East Bank, 11 yeah. inches of rain. Yeah. I mean, that's a tremendous amount of rainfall and explains why we're still seeing some of these streets flooded at this hour. Yeah, and look, you know, we'll, we'll assess things and, you know, certainly as this plays out, we're gonna talk more about insurance and the insurance commissioner and things like that, but the less structural damage we can have from yeah. the storm in our area, the better. And she said she doesn't see much, if you know. Which so is good news. That's encouraging because we all know what we're going through with the insurance crisis. Oh yeah.